Hey grumpy old gents, how's it going? I'm back to do the final video for our September marathon and I'm going to do the two films that were selected by Harry Benson. Harry Benson of the Deep South Swampland is uh, down there wrestling alligators even as we speak, you know, just tossing them around. Go get them, Harry. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. I I really have a thing about alligators. That's why I've never been to Florida. Just can't can't imagine walking around alligators. I just can't handle it. Anyway, so Harry gave me two very uh, very different kinds of films. One was a Humphrey Bogart classic from 1941 called High Sierra, which is here on this wonderful little um, box set uh, from Turner Classic Movies. We have The Petrified Forest, High Sierra, The Amazing Dr. Clitterhouse, which also stars... Um, yeah, what's his name? <clears throat> Edward G. Robinson. And then we have All Through the Night. Okay? Four very interesting films. I love Bogart more every time I see him. And uh, this is the second time that I watch High Sierra. So thank you, Harry, for getting me back to watch it again. And the second film that he asked me to watch is Star Wars, A New Hope. Or as I call it, just plain Star Wars. But what do I know? All right. So... Let's talk about High Sierra first. 1941, directed by Raoul Walsh, co-written by John Huston, and uh, Bogart is second billed after a, a marvelous actress from the from the Golden Age named Ida Lupino. Ida Lupino. We also have people like uh, Joan Leslie, Henry Travers. We have Arthur Kennedy, a very young Arthur Kennedy. Alan Curtis. Let's see. Uh, Cornell Wilde is in it. Um, very, very good film, which is classified as a film noir, and and also kind of a kind of a continuation of the Warner Brothers gangster genre, you know, that had started way back in in the early 1930s with Public Enemy, Jimmy Cagney, uh, Little Caesar with Edward G. Robinson and Paul Muni, and I, I'm a I'm a fugitive from a chain gang, things like that. In fact, this role was actually offered to Paul Muni first. And then it was offered to George Raff. They both turned it down. In fact, uh, supposedly Bogart wanted this part so badly that he he sort of uh, talked George he, George Raff into turning it down. But George Raff said that he didn't want to he didn't want to play this role because the guy that his character dies at the end. He didn't want to die at the end of the film. Anyway, I don't want to give too much away because I'm sure a lot of you have not seen this. Uh, I'm sure Harry has seen it. I'm, I'm sure that Bob has seen it. But I don't know about the rest of you. So, High Sierra, highly recommend it. Uh, this is a film that finally succeeded in putting Humphrey Bogart over as a major star. After he did this, uh, I think he made one other film after this, and then he did The Maltese Falcon. It was uh, stardom after that. And th this wasn't the first time he had played a gangster, a very complicated character. He had played a gangster in another terrific Warner Brothers film called The Petrified Forest, which is right here in this corner, co-starring Betty Davis and Leslie Howard. And he, he, he was brilliant. But even all through the 1930s, Bogart was doing a lot, of, um, a lot of different kinds of roles, including a horror film. And he was mainly, mainly a supporting player. And uh, he had to pretty much promote himself and talk himself into uh, getting this part. And he really runs away with it. Plays a guy named uh, Roy Earl, who later on in the film is, is dubbed Mad Dog Roy Earl. He's a, a, a guy who was in prison for uh, theft, larceny, and <clears throat> he gets paroled, which has been arranged by a corrupt politician with a gangster because this gangster wants um, Roy Earl to to get out of prison and, and uh, sort of commandeer uh, a big jewel heist at a hotel up in the near the uh, Sierra Mountains and so he gets out and it the the heist itself of course it goes wrong I'm not going to give you all the details it, it kind of reminds me of the the very famous heist that was planned and 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 failed in the asphalt jungle 1950 and also in uh, Stanley Kubrick's the killing uh, six years later five years later it was uh, a very convoluted plot, involved several people, and it, you know, goes wrong. And and uh, so, well, I, I don't want to give too much away. I, I really, th this this movie is full of uh, complications and 
different little subplots and uh, a lot of surprises. And Bogart is so incredible that it is worth your time to see this. So that, that's all I'm going to say. Now let's go over to Star Wars A New Hope. All right. Now, I saw the original Star Wars film. It wasn't New Hope then. There was no hope back in 1977. And when it first came out, and that was the one and only time that I had seen this movie until I watched it just uh, several days ago to get ready for this video. So uh, there were a lot of things that I remembered. Well, no, there weren't a lot of things. There were several things that I remembered that looked familiar and a lot of it that I had completely forgotten. Now, I was, I was never a big fan of Star Wars. Everybody loved this movie when it came out. This was a big, big thing back in 1977. Everybody went to see it. And uh, we all enjoyed it. It was, it, was a, it was different. It was exciting. It was colorful. And uh, everybody was raving about it, you know. And so I uh, went to see the next two movies after that. And then I was pretty much done with Star Wars. I, I liked The Empire Strikes Back quite a bit. Not as much as the first movie. Didn't like, excuse me, didn't like Return of the Jedi very much at all. So I just... Was, was kind of uninvolved by that and uh, I figured well that's that's all I, yeah, it never occurred to me that I would ever buy the Star Wars things when they when they came out when when home video came out but I did I did buy the, the steel books at Walmart back when these came out what was it 2015 20, 2014 I can't remember and they had them for all six of the films but I only bought the, the first three what I consider to be episodes one two and three but which are really four five and six you know how that goes but uh so a new hope i have to apologize beforehand to all of my friends who love star wars and i know that james is a big big star wars fan i totally respect that but in watching this again i didn't i didn't connect with it very much at all it it did not grab me and excite me and make me think wow i'm so glad to be watching star wars again i want to see more it was great seeing all of the actors Again, when they were so young, it was uh, a little bit heartbreaking to see Carrie Fisher, knowing that she's no longer with us. But uh, great seeing Peter Cushing and Alec Guinness and uh, the robots and all that sort of thing. But it was all kind of a blur to me. I, I guess I'm just not, uh, I'm just not that much pulled into it when I when I watch this. So, in a sense, it, it was good for me to see this again because. Uh, I know that I'm kind of closing the book on Star Wars. I'm not going to I'm not going to watch the other films again, and I'm not going to watch the prequels or anything. I just it's just not something I, I connect with. So I hope that doesn't offend anybody. I'm glad I watched it again, and in in some ways I really did enjoy it. Uh, little bits and pieces of it. I think I enjoyed the interactions between all the actors much more than all of the the razzle dazzle and the the fights and all that. I just didn't really. You know the force the lightsaber and all that it's just it's just not me sorry so anyway um so those are my films for the marathon the marathon is now finished at least for me so anyway comments are welcome and uh i'll see you later